Uh, just like the media, there's a bit of change going on on the waterfront, um, which is a tricky business. Back in the 90s, of course, there was the, uh, the waterfront dispute, 1998, uh, with, between uh, Patrick Corporation and the MUA. And this week, um, Asciano, which was the company that took over the Patrick business, announced that it would overhaul the key Sydney operation at Port Botany, bringing in automated technology and shedding 270 jobs over the next two years. Now, I spoke to Asciano Chief John Mullen about the challenges that he faces. Well, John Mullen, did you not tell the M MUA, the Maritime Union of Australia, about automating Port Botany when you did the EBA earlier this year because you were afraid it would really complicate matters and drag, you know, make what had already dragged on for six months drag on even more? Well, th these were completely separate processes. Uh, the, the EA process should have actually ended a year before, so there was no link. It wasn't like it was being negotiated at the same time. But you must have known when you signed um, off on the EBA that, or the EA that you were going to automate Port Botany. Well, we've known, every, everybody has known, we've made no secret of the fact that automation was on the agenda. Until the uh, knuckle and all the capacity expansion was in place, we couldn't do any automation. So that only, that only happened uh, only in May, so right at the end of the process. So the two just, just weren't linked. Is it fair to say that Port Botany uh, is the most difficult industrial environment and, and therefore the least productive of your ports? It's the least productive. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that's entirely due to uh, industrial situation. Clearly, the industrial situation hasn't been easy, but then we've also underinvested uh, from a capital perspective in Port Botany, and you see the evidence of that with, with old facilities, old poor working conditions for employees, old cranes, old straddles, uh, old equipment. So it's, it's really a, this is a comprehensive package of expanding the port to allow us the capacity to grow for the next 20 or 30 years, putting the latest technology uh, in place to allow us to be that much more productive and efficient, improve our customer service, uh, and also to improve the working conditions for our, our employees quite materially. And we, sh we should be achieving all three of those. I mean, obviously the MUA is not that happy about the automation at this point. They're, you know, they're expressing some dismay about the job cuts and so on. Do, do you think that you may have to get ready for a, another big dispute, perhaps not as big as 98, but, but something like that? Look, I sincerely hope not. Um, this is, unfortunately, the, the, the price of progress is that, that jobs are lost and, and we regret even the loss of one job, obviously. But, uh, you know, would you, would you rather be in the DC-3 or, or, or the A380? Um, the, the modern world changes the business environment for every company and that's the case for us. We have another competitor coming uh, next year, the world's largest. If we just sit there and rely on old systems, old processes and old work practices, uh, we'll go out of business and then there won't be jobs for anyone. Now, um, uh, I think your capacity after your investment goes to 1.6 million TEUs. Yes. Uh, and then uh, DP World's got 1.2 million and Hutchins, Hutchinson's bringing in 1, 1 million. A uh, total of um, 3.8 million capacity, that is. So what's the throughput of the port now? Well, it's, it's less, it's about two and a half now, two to two and a half. Um, uh, obviously the capacity it's putting in place, it's a step change. You're putting capacity now for growth out into the, the future. You, you know, and you obviously don't want to get right up against it, which we are now. We're only, we're only two years away from not having enough capacity to handle customers' business, uh, which is a situation you don't want to be in. Now the government has a, a challenge there because there is actually a, a limit imposed in total container throughput of I think 3.2 million TEU uh, for the whole of Port Botany, for everybody. So the government's going to have to address that, which I think it is as part of the sale process. Has your, investment, your business plan on the investment at Port Botany uh, assumed that there will remain three operators, stevedores, in the port uh, down the track, or, or is it a bet that one of them has to go? Well, our business plan assumes there will be three. Uh, we're also assuming that we will uh, be the largest and most successful of the three, uh, which is why we have to invest in, in being best in class. It's why we've got to put uh, uh, all outdated capital work practices behind us and, and be a, a true best in class uh, performer by global and Australian standards. But do you think the three can survive long term? I think it'll be, I think it'll be tough for three to survive with adequate returns on the capital involved. You can see from the size of the investment we're making, this is not a, this is not a low capex business. This is one where you've really got to invest to stay up there. And the size of Australia, as you've seen with many other industries, whether it's airlines or whatever, there's a lot of capital involved. It's rare that you can have three 
major players with all with big market shares. It's, it's going to be a tough battle, no doubt about that. Thanks for joining us, John Mallon. That's a great pleasure. Thank you.